It is Thursday, April 5th, 2018, and welcome to Flickr Effect. This is episode 249. I'm David Lotz. Joining me this week is Bobby Jackson. Hey, what's up, everybody? And Michelle Hillard. Hi, everybody. How are you? Uh, well, I'm pretty good. I can't speak for the listeners, but I'm doing all right. <laughs> if you're asking me. I'm, 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 asking, I'm asking you two lovely gentlemen as well as our listeners. Hope, hopefully everybody's good. Great. Good. Absolutely great. Good. Uh, we still have nice weather. It's actually so, it was surprisingly chilly today. Uh, You're saying ch- chilly. Chilly as in comfortable. Like, just chilly for us in Orlando in April. I, I, I hate to even use the word chilly. I just want to oh, say geez. delightful. It was just delightful. Like, let's not curse this, shall we? Because you basically just submitted us to All right, Halloween. It was nice. Hey, it's going to be chilly. If it were my fault that we're about to hell have a hell of like three or four months, then that's going to happen either way. So. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, we got some stuff to talk about. Mostly news this week. Uh, we didn't really get to talk, talk about any news on our last episode. Uh, as we spent a lot of time talking about some stuff we had watched and our Ready Player One review. Um, which, it's been interesting since we've done that review and now I've been listening and reading other reviews like... The the different the different opinions out there on Ready Player One is interesting to read. It <laughs> for is. Sure. It is. Um, and it's funny in my spare time driving as I do at work, I've actually been re-listening to Ready Player One this week. I'm actually most of the way oh, through nice. it already. Oh really? Yeah. Oh wow. I'm like 25 out of 40 chapters, I think it is. I'm 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 making my wow. way through it. I thought about doing that. I, in fact, I wanted to do it prior to the movie coming out. And then after seeing the movie, I wanted to do it as well, just because I wanted to kind of go back and revisit the that world from the book's perspective again, just because of how much I enjoyed it. So when I had been like you, David, listening to a lot of the other reviews out there, and I can't quantify exactly how many people, but there's a decent amount of people who didn't enjoy the book. Yeah. And it surprises me because I'm like, and, and a lot of them point to the fact that it's um, just a bunch of like things thrown in there for nostalgia purposes or the sake of just being able to say, remember this kind of thing. And I never really felt that way. I just felt like this was the purpose in which the the book was built around but so it made sense that there'd be so much and it felt to me like a, a nice callback to that time but i don't know i just I, I, I didn't get that vibe from it yeah I've, I've been noticing the same thing a lot of people kind of attacking the book it's funny how many people just like straight up like oh it's terrible like duh it's terrible like and i think that was another thing that kind of inspired me to re-listen to it this week because I'm like, I really enjoyed it the first time. Was I crazy? <laughs> like, So right. I started listening to it again. And I mean, you know, I talked about this last episode, how part of me is like, is maybe is there really a different experience between listening to it, reading it? And I'm listening to it again and I've yet to read it. This is my second time listening to the audio version. Um, part of me is imagining as I'm listening to it the second time, I'm like, I could see how a lot of this, when you're reading it, could get a little boring. But for some reason, listening to Will Wheaton read it, it's perfectly entertaining me. <laughs> I don't know. Mm. And and yeah, I mean, of course, all the nostalgia stuff is, I think, what I enjoy about it. I mean, there's plenty of, there's plenty of stuff in that book that I was not familiar with. I mean, I am aware of a lot of the games that they refer to a lot, especially a lot of these really old school Atari games. Like the 70s stuff. There's some 70s like arcade games that I'm like, wait, what? But it's like, not, I'm not even familiar with. Basically, yeah, what I'm saying is it's not like I every reference in that book I caught. Absolutely not. Oh, There's God, a no. ton of stuff Jesus. that I'm like, I don't know what they're talking about, but it's still fascinating to me just listening to, you know, Wade, this character, talk about this stuff. And, uh, I mean, yeah, outside of all of those, re- those references and the nostalgia, you know, is the story really that solid? I mean, you know, no, it's not 
this is not New York Times bestseller quality writing, I guess, is the best way to put it. But I, 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 I found it thoroughly enjoyable to listen to. And I am the second time around. But uh, I don't know. A lot of people have been shitting on it lately. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, yeah, all, all I'll say is so far I'm, I'm pat, I'm just past the Jade key part now in my second listening mm. and, uh, yeah, I'm thoroughly enjoying it and I, yeah, I'm especially enjoying it the second time because now after watching the movie, which is so incredibly different from the book, now I had a hard time remembering how the book worked compared uh, to the movie, especially the Jade key that for some reason there was something about the Jade key in the book that I was just like, man, I cannot for the life of me remember how they got that or how that played out. So that part of the book right now is like, Oh yeah. Okay. Like it's, it's really interesting to listen to because it's like the one part of the book for whatever reason that just kind of, I, I spaced out now or I don't know. It was kind of, was kind of a black hole of information, huh. but um, anyway, yeah. I've been I've been doing that this this week. Nice. So. Well, you go. There I go, and then I, maybe I'll go back to listening to some Star Star Wars books. After I'm done with this, we'll see. I don't know. <laughs> um, you know, let's let's talk about some news in the meantime. Uh, so, uh, Avengers: Infinity War has um, some tracking numbers that came out uh, just in the past what day or two. And uh, surprise, surprise, it looks like it's going to do very well for itself. Um, tracking numbers at this point are pointing toward uh, just uh, upwards around 200 million for that opening weekend. Which, uh, if you ask me, I, I am not completely surprised by. Uh, that's a lot of money. But uh, I, I don't know. I, for me, hearing that it's going to make over 200 million sounds, yeah, that sounds about right. My question for you guys is, uh, if you had to predict right now, where do you see this movie landing in its opening weekend? And I'm going to go to you first, Bobby. Uh, how do you think Avengers Infinity War is going to do in its opening weekend? Okay, so the record holder right now is Star Wars The Force Awakens at $247 million. And while I think there's a strong possibility that Infinity War could beat that... I, I think the things that may that may halter it would be just the amount of I guess the amount of showings that they could fit into one day. And I'm not sure how that'll all play out. So I'm actually and I, and I say this, but I'm gonna go conservative, which isn't actually conservative, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say like around I'm gonna go with two thirty five. So wow. You, so you're thinking just short of Force Awakens. It's not going to beat that. Yeah. But... No. All right, Michelle. You're in the hot seat. Where Where is it going to land? This isn't, we're not going to call this our official predictions, but right now, if mm. you had to guess, uh, where is really this going to land in the opening? I weekend? really don't know because I feel like. Or, I mean, do you think it's going to beat Force Awakens or not? I don't think it's going to beat Force Awakens. Why? I don't know. See, this is why. This is like, I have no idea how to answer this question. Um, I think it's just because I feel like, yes, on all of the social media things that I follow, everybody's ridiculously excited because we're all a bunch of geeks. I just don't think that as much as I love Marvel and this entire universe that's happening and then this whole Infinity War thing much as all of us nerds are geeking out about it when i compare that to star wars there's people that just enjoy star wars and they'll go see a star wars film not because they're like uber star wars nerds and i feel like there's enough people that will go see marvel films that aren't uber marvel nerds i just don't think there's the same numbers of people does that make sense star wars no it totally makes sense i mean like am i explaining this well oh yeah no i i totally get what you're saying i think the average like enjoyer of star wars the numbers are higher than the average enjoyer of the marvel films right i don't know if i'm making explaining it so i feel that i don't think the droves are going to go out quite as much and also i feel like some people are kind of like Oh yeah, Infinity War. Okay, great, another Marvel film. And I think because people have been so not interested in what's happened with 
the actual Avengers films, the recent ones, they might just be like, oh, yeah, another Avengers film. Great. Whole team's all together. Awesome. Like, I can't see them being that excited. And I'm saying all this, and I know that in my little realm, my little corner of the world, we're all losing our freaking minds. We think it's awesome. I'm excited. I just don't think enough people outside of this realm are that ex- is excited. I don't. I don't know. My my take is this. I I get Force Awakens and why it made so much. This was a franchise that we hadn't seen anything from Star Wars in a long time, and this was the first Star Wars movie after the the prequels that you know we all know how everyone feels about the prequels and this was going to be the first star wars movie that was like hopeful that oh wow this is going to feel like old school star wars right and there's you can see why that made so much money total in its opening weekend period like we get it so yeah in that respect i would definitely not think that Infinity War is going to make what Force Awakens did because it's not the same circumstances. We've been getting Marvel movies like we're we just had one. We just eight we weeks just ago had uh, Black Panther, but then I think about Black Panther and I think about how much money Black Panther made in its opening weekend, two hundred and two. Uh, right, <laughs> and that's a movie that obviously people were excited about, but I I can't imagine that we would anybody with a straight face could say yeah this far out of black panther there was as much buzz about black panther as there is as as infinity war right now you know there's just there feels like there's just something about infinity war because this is what we've been building to for so long that i'm gonna go out on a limb and say i'm thinking it's gonna go like 250 oh wow i mean i'm the I've heard even more crazy numbers. I mean, I've heard the 300 prediction, which is no, no that it's not going to happen. There's no possible but way, but... I, I could see... I'm going to say my guess is it is going to be Force Awakens just by just by a hair. Yeah. I think it can happen. Man, I mean, there's a lot prediction... of reasons to not think that's going to happen. Trust me. And if it doesn't, I won't be surprised. I'm right. not going to be like, oh, man, it only made 230. That's such a bummer. Like, please. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah but... No. And I'm super concerned because I'm. I was gonna say two twelve. I mean, yeah. see, after listening to Michelle, I, I was. She convinced me to change my number because, in listening to her, she gave me the exact reasons, in in opposition as to why I think it actually will make more. So. Now I was, you know, um, before you said it, David, I was actually thinking it <laughs> is that I'm going to change my number back to what I initially thought, which was the 250 because, and you've sort of touched on it, David, that with what Black Panther did, mm-hmm. not necessarily because the fact that Black Panther made that money. So by nature of the fact that it's Avengers, it should make more. My thing is that because a lot of people who maybe don't go to superhero movies that showed up for Black Panther, they know Black Panther is in Avengers, so maybe those same people will show up, even if they don't care about the other characters in Avengers, because they maybe haven't seen those other movies, will still go just for Black Panther being in that movie. So that alone just, I think, elevates it and pushes it up from the number that I was initially thinking, which would have done that without that extra crowd. I think of people who weren't really into comic book movies. I think now that would push it and elevate it up into the 250s, possibly even a 260 number. So yeah, I'm definitely going that it'll break the Force Awakens record. Yeah, I mean, I see what you're saying. Like everyone, on, everyone is obviously on such a Black Panther high that you know people are like oh my god i loved it i want more and boom you get to have more like in less than a month (laughs) and and obviously black panther is in this wakanda is in this this isn't just black Uh panther it's not like civil war shiri is in it yeah you know i mean that whole crew is in this i don't know it's gonna be interesting (laughs) but it's just funny the tracking that oh it's gonna be plus 200 million yeah to me that's like of course yeah, it was like a no-brainer. Yeah, I'm not surprised by that at all. It'll be interesting to see. I don't think Disney has officially put out their own tracking number, which apparently they're pretty conservative. So 
they they could even come out with like below 200 but come on who are we kidding <laughs> yeah there's no way <laughs> so what did uh captain america uh i just lost it captain america 2 soldier winter soldier winter, winter soldier. soldier what did it do that first opening weekend do, 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 do. Oh, stand by I'll, I'll tell you in a second. Uh, I, I here's, can tell you it didn't do that. <laughs> right. Well, here's the thing is that I just feel like, yeah, people are, are major Captain fans, and I think the people are major Galaxy fans, and they're big into Iron. Like, I feel like there's individual, like, little little groupings of people that are going to be really into things, but... Uh, Winter Soldier pulled in 95. Yeah, which is a good number. I mean, no, that's I solid. That. I think I'm gonna. I I think right now I'm saying two twelve. Civil War opened to one seventy nine, for what it's worth. Uh, well, I think I can almost go as high as two twenty right now, but I mean that's right now. Yeah, I, I feel I mean, like yeah, closer maybe, closer maybe to the like, day, maybe I'll ju- adjust it. But right now I'm kind right of like before this drops, maybe we'll. Uh, yeah. Give some I don't know. F- more official bet predictions of some kind. But. I feel like it's I feel like it's super, super hyped right now. Yeah. I really do. I and mean, I think it's just gonna get more. And it's hyped. not even at its biggest point yet. It's yeah. gonna get bigger. I mean there's just gonna be more hype. It's gonna the marketing machine is going to be insane <laughs> for the, basically the rest of this month. Do you think yeah. it's gonna be oversaturation? Like oh people are like, no. Oh I don't I don't in terms of marketing, I don't think so. No. I think it's just going to be people's heads are ready to explode because it's getting closer and closer and they've got the different types of um, screenings happening around, which probably will lead to our next uh, thing to talk about as far as right. Avengers, where, you know, people get to see parts of the film and the more people are seeing it. And if you get those reactions of people being excited by what they see, it's just going to reach a boiling point by the time it actually comes out. And I also feel like in the marketing, I mean, it remains to be seen what they'll do in the, within the next month, but we basically seem like we've got our final trailer, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. though I haven't watched that trailer, actually, I don't think the three of us, none of us have. Mm-hmm. Um, it sounds like if we did watch it, it doesn't really reveal a lot. And it seems like they've done a pretty good job of getting everyone excited with the marketing, but they're really not telling us much, mm-hmm. which is perfect. Well, cause... about damn time. I'm tired of watching trailers to give away all this shit. Yeah. Quite I'm, honestly. I'm, with you, like... I'm tired of seeing trailers. I go, oh, wow, that just blew that whole. Okay, great. But I yeah, guess I can. It, it for sure seems like uh, they are really safeguarding the you know secrets of this movie. And uh, they're not showing too much in the trailers and some shit's going to go down and they want to, you know, make it special for everyone when they see it for the first time in the movie theater. All right. How many minutes into the film is somebody going to (laughs) die? How many minutes? Oh, within the first minute. Well, you talking about a major character? Yeah. Like dying, like not just anybody. (laughs) I mean, like a major, I mean, like a minute. I was going to say, I have a prediction within the first 12 minutes, a major character is going to die. I don't know. I can't. I haven't like, thought about that. Like all of a sudden, we're all gonna be like, "Holy wait, what just happened?" And I think it's just gonna like shock everybody to their core. And you're like, "Wait a second, hold on, that's not that didn't just." So why the first minute? You were very quick well, to jump okay. on that. I was gonna say. I mean, I was just so, gonna say. The and, first as, 12, and as but... I said it, I really thought about how long a minute lasts. <laughs> I'll say the first five minutes. I'll say. So why because... so quickly in this movie? Do you feel like a major Avengers character is going to die? Oh, I didn't say Avengers character. I just said a major character. Well, I, you said major character initially, and that's what I agreed with, the major character. And my thought is that, you know... You that think Pepper's going down, huh? Taking no, her out. The Doesn't... way, the way um, Thor Ragnarok ended and the way you see clips oh. in this film, it looks to me as though uh, Loki will not be returning for Avengers 4. <laughs> so that's that's my prediction is that Loki makes a, a sacrifice for the people that are maybe left on that ship after Thanos encounters it, and that hmm. he sacrifices himself in one oh, he's last go- heroic he's really kind of thing for thing Thor, and, the, and he's out. Hmm. What's that, Michelle? I was just thinking, man, you got this all figured out. Thinking, you've been thinking about this. 
Uh, I mean, hey, I could be wrong, but it just seems like in the marketing right. and the one trailer I did see, <laughs> they show them that one time and you don't really see them anywhere else within the other scenes of the, right. the clips on any other planets or places. I think, I think you got a decent theory stuff. going here. I think you got we'll a, see. you're working a decent theory. I'd say just within the first 12 minutes, I've got a feeling somebody's going to get nudged out and you're going to be like, wait a second. Holy, we're not even halfway. What? I will say before listening to Bobby's theory, which I, I get what he's saying, though I don't know that I necessarily buy into that. Other than that possibility, I don't think it'll be within the first 15 minutes. I don't think it'll be that early in the movie, but I could see that maybe. I don't know. It's well, interesting. I hadn't thought about that one. So. I just figure it's a good way for Thanos to establish that he's... He's not fucking around? Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and exactly. Uh, in this movie, we're not fucking around? Like, no, guys. Yeah. Like, People are dying. Things are happening. Yeah. We're going to start off by really setting the mood for what kind of guy this is by let's right off the bat kill someone. That's what I'm saying. I, I, I get it. Anyhow. If I had to place a bet, I'm still going to say not not that early. But like but. in the first 30 minutes? Not, not, well, even, then, not who, even. And, and then just to kind of count, uh, go on with that a little bit, who do you think is going to die then? Uh, oh, see, now there's... I mean, I, I know... In the 500 the characters con- they're going to have. A lot of the conversation <laughs> is pointing toward Cap, and I get that. Mm-hmm. And I mean, sure, I guess I would probably fall in the same boat. If I had to pick a major character, I'd probably say the same thing. Uh, but I, it's not like this is something I've thought about in depth. So, I mean, I'm going to say cap, but mm. I, I, it's mainly because I, I understand that reasoning and that, cause that's where everyone seems to be pointing toward. I, yeah. I don't think it'll be Tony Stark. And I, See, but I also just don't think it's going to be just one die. No, not necessarily, but. So, I mean, I feel, I feel like cap's going to be one and I think there's going to, there could be probably two others that are gonna be very like wait what so Bob, bobby your, your thoughts on that one since you brought it up well it's i mean it's hard to say just because even though i haven't watched trailers i'm always reading the news and looking at different things here and there and there's been stuff shot for the other movie so it's it's like seeing scenes from the other movie and what you see in the pictures it leads you to believe certain things, but that could be not what you're thinking. It could be either. So it's, it's hard to say based on that. My, 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 my thought is that it won't be any of the major Avengers that be die in this movie. I would think maybe they might do something in the next movie, but, um, there will be other deaths like non Avenger related characters possibly, but, not any of the main core, and by main core, I just mean Iron Man, Thor, Hulk, Captain America, right. and I think that's my main, main my main crew. Right, I get that. Well, yeah, talking about uh, revealing secrets, it was uh, there was a picture that popped up on social media this week from the Russo brothers, and it is a a letter from them. It appears in the picture to be Thanos kind of showing it to the world. Uh, it's all hashtag Thanos demands your silence. <laughs> um, <laughs> basically, just kind of telling fans like, uh, look, this movie is going to start coming out and there's going to be, you know, screenings, you know, right before the movie comes out and the movie's going to come out. And obviously everyone's going to be seeing it opening weekend. But let's really just keep it to yourselves. Like, let everyone enjoy it. Just keep your mouth shut is basically what this letter says. Um, which by the way, yeah, it was funny. Uh, Yasha, who couldn't join us tonight, shared with us what was it like? Honest Trailers did like their own version of the letter, and uh, or but Michelle, did you share that? Might have been me. Oh my god, so, I'm sorry, Michelle. <laughs> As, yeah, Honest Trailers did it on Funny or Die. It was uh, it was pretty. I liked their version a lot. Theirs was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it was a funny version. Um. But uh, yeah, so uh, they, this is more evidence that uh, they they are really trying to keep everyone tight lipped on this. Don't don't spoil it for others. I'm not gonna read the whole letter, but 
Um, also with that in mind, uh, there was someone on Twitter, uh, I think this is the account Everything Marvel, uh, they had tweeted this week, uh, the fact that the Russo brothers won't give us the Avengers 4 title because it spoils Infinity War scares the shit out of me. And uh, the Russo brothers actually responded to him and they just simply said it should. Which uh, <laughs> is uh, now got everyone in a tizzy like, oh my God, the Avengers Infinity War title is going to, you know, be kind of a spoiler for, or yeah, the Avengers 4 title is going to be a spoiler for Infinity War obviously why we haven't figured heard yet what it's going to be my question for you guys do you think at the very end of infinity war are we going to get the title i thought about that and it's hard to say just because if you do that at the end it's it's is that the the time that they're looking for to be able to reveal that because then people will have seen it that opening night and then it'll be all over the internet and so does that spoil essentially why would they so i guess my thought is if they're keeping it from us because we haven't seen three then not everyone will have seen three on the opening weekend so then you know it will be out there for everybody to know so won't that spoil it for people who still haven't had a chance to see the movie yet so my thought is maybe they don't do it on the tag end of the Avengers three, and maybe they save it for like the week after, or maybe even as late as Comic Con, because I'm sure they're going to have a presentation of other stuff there, and and maybe that's one of their things is that they'll announce that title. But um, yeah, I, just for the the purposes of just your question, I don't think that they'll tell us at the end of the the movie. Michelle, what do you think? I kind of feel like it's a 50-50 shot. They could be like, yep, here it is. Well, the the Avengers will all return in Infinity War or whatever the next title is going to be, blah, 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 blah. But I also see they could be like, yeah, no. Go suck a bag of dicks. We'll talk to you guys all at Comic-Con about it. <laughs> like, I think you're basically getting a 50-50 yeah, shot here. I, like, if I see that at the end of the scroll, then, yeah, at the you know, very bitter end. Like... <laughs> right. They could be like, here's the final title for the next one. Or they could be like, yeah, you know, we'll see y'all. See y'all at Comic-Con. We'll tell you then could be either way i uh, i i could s my thought this whole time is that they are going to do it at the very end of the credits for this film but i get what you're saying bobby in terms of why to wait but it seems like it would be so powerful to kind of like do it at the very end of this like how cool would it be to like right then okay now find out okay now i've seen this movie now i know what the next one's called i can see it mm -hmm. both ways so i guess in a way i'm kind of feeling the same way you are michelle it's like 50 50 it just depends on how the promotion is going to be done. Like, I mean, and that's like, already all been pre-planned out. So, I mean. Because I could see that most, like, news outlets, film blogs and such, if they do reveal it at the end of Infinity War, I think in terms of press, most people would probably be pretty cool about, like, not just straight up, okay, everybody, this is the Avenger 4 title. Like, they would kind of almost kind of hide it behind a spoiler warning at least for a week or two, you know? I would say before. for the first opening weekend, and then come Monday morning, all hell probably break loose. But then your other problem is, of course, just people in general, which is what the last yeah, news exactly. bit was about. Right. Is just... Twitter's going to be spoiled with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, maybe the legit press-type people won't do it, but there's always going to be people who want to ruin the fun for others and will definitely put it out there as quickly as they possibly can. I think I, my other thing though, is that I, I have a hard time imagining that whatever the Avengers four title is, that it's going to be a very specific spoiler. I don't, I mean, it's hard to, it's so hard to say without having seen this movie yet and then right. not knowing what that title is yet. But part of me feels like, yeah, it, it's, maybe going to kind of generally tie into whatever happens at the end of this third movie, but it's not like, you know, Avengers four, let's avenge cap or something. <laughs> you know, it's not going to be well, that specific. Or what if it was Avengers four, uh, fallen soldier? I would think that would evoke in my mind, like, Oh, did something happen to cap? <laughs> so he's the soldier of the, right. Of the Avengers, but so. it's not going to be that. That's just, yeah, I, I mean to get specific do i think that would be the title no i don't even if he did die i don't i don't know we'll see i guess yeah um 
Well, while we're talking about uh, Marvel films, uh, Black Panther, as we talked about a little while ago, is continuing to do uh, very well for itself. Uh, this past week, it passed another milestone. It uh, passed Jurassic World for the all-time domestic uh, box office pool. It is now number four over Jurassic World, but just behind Titanic. Uh, Black Panther is now pulled in $652 million. Uh, and yeah, I would, it, it appears that it will most certainly pass Titanic and pull into that number three spot. Uh, now going for two and one, that's probably almost certainly not going to happen. Avatar is at number two, pulling in six, 760 million and Star Wars, the force awakens is at number one at 963 million. Mm. Um, also it has now made the top 10 for worldwide charts. Uh, I think Frozen used to be at number 10, and it now holds the number 10 spot with $1.279 yeah. billion. Uh, yeah, Star Wars The Last Jedi is in the number 9 spot, if you're curious, with $1.332 billion. Yep. Which it has a good chance of beating. It, it does. <laughs> it's crazy, uh, because I don't know if you had heard about this, David, but... There was an article today saying that um, Black Panther is going to open in Saudi Arabia, and they haven't had a movie in Saudi Arabia in like 30 years or yeah, something. Yeah, they're like finally going to. I don't have those details in front of me, but I had heard the same thing. Actually, I think it was on NPR. I heard that story that they are going to open up movie theaters in Saudi Arabia for the first time in I don't know how long. <laughs> and it sounds like that Black Panther is going to be the movie to kind of pop that movie theater cherry. So Black Panther will be the first movie that people in Saudi Arabia will get to see in in a movie theater anyway and forever. And it makes it like, okay, so we're talking these numbers. And just when you think, okay, it, it should be waning, dying down at the box office, it still has a place it hasn't opened yet. Opened yet. yet. <laughs> and, and granted, <laughs> you know, maybe the box office might not be huge there. But even if it like, I don't know in terms of how much money – um, a movie would make in Saudi Arabia, obviously because they haven't been <laughs> showing movies there. But right. even if it only made like five or ten million, that's adding to the pot of what it already has and pushing those, you know, foreign international box office worldwide totals that much higher. So, but yeah, great. I mean, I don't, I don't know the population in Saudi Arabia. I don't have that in front right. of me. But if, let's think about that. Like you're in a country where you haven't been able to see a movie in a movie theater, and you know. I think it was like 20 or 30 years or something. And now like, okay, you imagine what the very first movie that anyone in that country is basically going to get a chance to see in a movie theater. What the, it, there's, right. everyone's going to be going to see There's a large portion Panther. of the population that's never seen a movie in a theater ever their entire lives. Right. Like ever, like never, ever, It doesn't, ever. basically it doesn't matter what that first movie is. Right. Everyone there is going to go see it is what is yeah. how I would, you know, take it. But Yeah. Kind of, kind of crazy to think about. It is. It is. Uh, so, what else has been going on? We haven't talked about news in uh, what a couple weeks at this point. So, there's some other news items that uh, uh, a little bit older, but we haven't had a chance to talk about. Uh, 20th Century Fox, for example, they did some reshuffling recently. Um, they moved some films around. Uh, Bohemian Rhapsody actually got pushed up. It was originally going to come out on Christmas. It's now coming out on November 2nd. Um, but, uh, formally on November 2nd, we were going to get X-Men, uh, Dark Phoenix that is now being pushed back to February 14th, 2019. So that's not going to come as soon as we thought it was going to come. And then, uh, the new mutants, uh, film that, uh, has already been moved once new mutants was basically is supposed to be coming out basically right now. Originally, we had seen a trailer for it. It was supposed to come out in April. I don't, I don't remember when in April. Uh, it got pushed to February of 2019, and uh, now it is coming out in August of 2019. So, New Mutants has definitely seen some some change. Uh, uh, Bobby, you might know a little more about this. Uh, what do you, what do you, what's going on here? Ah, uh, well. Let's go with the the sad one first, is which is the New Mutants. So, from what I understand, the director he 
envisioned having this movie be a, a horror type film. And so that's essentially what they shot. And, and then it went to Fox and I, I, I think it had some screenings and they were like, okay, well, I think we need to change this. We want to make it more of a, of a YA type of a film and less on the horror elements. So I, I guess, um, what's his name? Josh Boone, I think is the director's name. Yeah, He so. went and decided to do what, uh, what they wanted to do at Fox and, and, uh, changed a lot of what he had already shot and done and decided to um, tone down on things and, and play up that romantic kind of YA element to the movie. And then uh, apparently Fox watched um, it when it came out and how popular and big it was. And it revitalized the idea of maybe this could be a horror film. So then they were like, okay, um, you know what we said before about making it YA, let's not do that. And you were probably right the first time. So let's go back to that. Right. And um, so now apparently they're going to do, and and I think I saw something where it said um, reshooting about 50% of the film. So that's essentially why you're getting uh, new mutants coming out in late next year. That is so it's ridiculous. What's that, Michelle? It's just yeah. ridiculous. It's uh, mm, yeah. <laughs> too many people's hands in the pot. Mm. I mean, make a yeah. decision and stick with it. Otherwise, at this point, like it's kind of like, do you do you really want this film? Like, maybe you should just scrap the project then. If you can't make a decision on it. At this point, it's it's very dubious in terms of whether or not it will be released, and not just because whether or not whether the movie is good or bad. It's just because by that point, it's a very real possibility that Fox will be a part of Disney, and will Disney still want to release the movie in theaters? Will they want to do it on their streaming service, or will they just decide to can it? So, it's it's hard to feel like that movie is going to actually come out the way it's supposed to right. even in that time frame and then as far as the the dark phoenix part of it um there's different things that that are at play there part of it they said is because there were some reshoots that were needed to be done but one report i read said that the reshoots weren't part of the scheduled reshoots so since they weren't part of scheduled reshoots it was difficult to align everyone's uh, time because you're, you got people like Michael Fassbender in there and then you have Jennifer Lawrence and so there's all these big name actors and getting their schedules together was a difficult task and so um, once they were able to align that that just meant pushing the movie out and I also heard part of the report was that the third act I think they said maybe specifically like the last 30 minutes maybe needed to be reworked in some form or fashion and one report that I read said that it was like they came in under budget, so they still had money to to spend there to beef it up in some way or or or, or another. And that's another reason as far as what the delay would would be. But yeah, um, obviously, without them making some sort of official statement of airing their dirty laundry, we just left with the speculation and what the people who are inside are giving and feeding to the people that are in news outlets and stuff like that yeah I'd, i've been hearing the same thing about the budget they fell actually below budget also according to the hollywood reporter they had an insider tell them that it seems like uh, the studio had already been kind of planning and are hoping to move it out of that november 2nd date uh, because they had concerns with it having to go up against uh, Nutcracker in the Four Realms, which is Disney's uh, tent pole that's coming out that month. Well, that looks pretty interesting. Yeah. And then also they point to the fact that, you know, not shocking, uh, the new February date, uh, that's President's Day weekend, which with the success of Black Panther and Deadpool, that, that kind of uh, time has now become a prime date to release a superhero film since hey, yeah we can make money in february guys let's let's release in february <laughs> so which should make sense but your movie's still got to be good uh it's you just can't release any old thing in february and think that it's gonna make 
bananas amount some money right. just because there's not much else out. Right. You know? In fact, that that puts more of a spotlight on you because you probably might be the only thing, the only game in town. So if you've got the spotlight all to yourself and you don't put out a solid movie, then you're really going to catch heat for the fact that you, you, you specifically sought out that piece of real estate and didn't bring it. Right. Exactly. Uh, in other news, uh, Captain Marvel is in production. It's funny, uh, Captain Marvel, uh, very recently, what, about a week ago, they announced that, uh, they are starting production though. It all it appeared to everyone that they had been in production for a while. It was the most confusing thing I've ever seen in my life. I was like, wait, I thought we've been in production for like a month, kids. Then I've heard that theory of were they really in production? Were they like shooting like an after credit scene for something else? You know, and mm. yeah, you know, like, who, who knows? Could be. Could be. Could could be. So yeah, uh, but- whatever it is, Captain Marvel's in production now. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Dis- Disney or yeah, Disney and Marvel made the announcement. They released a, a photo. Um, what on on an Air Force base right. with uh, with uh, her character and uh, another female character, I'm not familiar with on this on this jet. They also revealed some casting news. Uh, Clark Gregg is going to return be returning to uh, the big screen in a Marvel film as his uh, character, Agent Coulson. As we all know, he's been in the Agents of Shield show on uh, ABC for a little while now, but we haven't seen him on the big screen since uh, the first Avengers film. <sighs> <laughs> so sad. It was such a sad moment. But with this movie being set in the nineties, uh this yeah. makes sense that uh we could see Clark Gregg and indeed we will. Uh two other interesting additions are Lee Pace and Jamon Hansu. Uh those two of course were in uh Guardians of the Galaxy. And it would appear they will be playing those characters uh in this film of uh Ronan and uh what was Jamon Hansu's name? Korath. Korath the Pursuer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's interesting and weird. Well, not so weird considering uh, what uh, Captain Marvel's background, right? Yeah, I guess exactly. not, but I'm just kind of like, oh, wow. Huh, look at that. It's kind of cool because I, I really cool. like Ronan as a character, one that I've actually read some in a Marvel comic book before. Mm-hmm. And I liked him in Guardians of the Galaxy, even though it, it seems like a lot of people point to the fact that he wasn't a very great villain. And I kind of get that. No. But it gives him another opportunity, or all of us another opportunity to see more of him. Maybe right. a better version of him, if you will. I don't know. I think it's it's pretty cool. Well, It's very cool. I will I will say it's interesting to see Clark Gregg basically he's going to be a younger version of himself as Agent Coulson in the 90s. But man, yeah. he has been if you follow him on Instagram, he's been working out. Like working out hard. Oh yeah. Like super hard. Like it's been funny to watch him cuz he's like he's really trying to get into some spectacular shape and he's he is going to be in pretty spectacular shape for his age and everything. I'm like, "Geez, you go, boy. You do you, man." Go for it. Well, you know, it's funny because Clark Gregg, he, I've been watching Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. since the first episode and still to this day, and he doesn't look like he gets any older to me, and he still pretty <laughs> much looks like he did when right. he was Coulson from the movies. I, so I, I'm less worried about how he'll look in the 90s as opposed to how um, Samuel Jackson <laughs> looks supposedly in the 90s because right. he's also in the movie. So will they be using that? special effect that de-aging effect on him because the character is supposed to be younger obviously back then so that that's where my curiosity lands yeah and like david i'm very excited to see some of those characters like ronin and korath show back up because it just makes it really feel connected and them being able to use characters like that i would have never thought that they would have put those characters in when there's obviously many other characters you could right. put from the comics or just in general in that movie. But to do a callback like that, I thought was like, wow, I, that, I wouldn't have thought of that, but that's actually pretty cool. And because you can see characters like that, there's literally it, the sky's the limit in a sense where there's no reason why you couldn't necessarily um, get a cameo by Yondu in that movie. Uh, yeah, I could see that. 
Yeah. I hadn't thought about that before, but I don't know. Uh, the more I'm hearing about this movie, the more interested in I am in it, even though, yeah, Captain Marvel I'm not familiar with, but uh, uh, it looks like it should be Very pretty interesting. Very powerful character. Yeah, and then being set in the 90s should be fun to watch. And uh, I would imagine, indeed, that they'll use some de-aging, especially on uh, on um, Samuel L. Jackson in this. Probably yeah. Clark Gregg to a point, too. But uh, if not, just to give him some hair, maybe. <laughs> like, mm. in, the, in this film, who knows. But uh, yeah, this movie's coming uh, March 8th of 2019. Yeah, I think you guys will probably get to see some stuff from that in Hall H this year at uh, Comic Con. Yeah, I would imagine so. Yeah. Um, uh, in other news, uh, we found out that uh, so Jurassic World, uh, what was it, Fallen Kingdom, is coming this summer, right? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So we haven't even seen the second film yet, but we already know that there's going to be a third film, and Steven Spielberg has confirmed that Colin Trevorrow is going to return and direct the third film. Yeah, oh. you know it's funny bringing this up. So Jurassic World, uh, I've talked about on the show before. Like that movie came. You were out, late to the party. I was late to the party. That movie came out the weekend my daughter was born. So basically, I was just off the grid in terms of movies for like that weekend, especially, and even like the next couple weeks. So I never saw it in the theater. I didn't see it for months until I finally watched it at home, and I was like, "Oh wow, that was that was good. I liked it." And I guess also, not, did I not see it the weekend it came out, but I guess I also just wasn't paying any attention to, you know, reactions to it. And it, I found it interesting lately. I've been, you know, listening to other podcasts, reading some stuff from other film sites and how many people did not seem to like that movie. And it's, I've been finding it very surprising. Like, really? Like, it almost seems like the general consensus was this movie was not very good. And everyone was really disappointed by it. And I'm like, I don't know. I, I enjoyed Jurassic World. <laughs> like, am I am I crazy? I guess I just wasn't paying attention to how everyone else felt. So I don't know. I'm just... People are weird. <laughs> because I don't understand how... It feels like that's in retrospect and, and just um, backlash for some weird weird reason because look at the look at the record it had, oh, it had made insane for money opening. yeah and it doesn't get to do that if the movie is as bad as people are making it out to be in the sense that um obviously you can do well in an opening weekend but it doesn't get to where it got in a global sense unless people keep going back for it so right I don't know where and why and at what point in time the backlash started, but I don't recall it being as much as it is now as it was within, I don't know, let's say the first month that it came out. I don't recall hearing that much bad about it. I, I, there's little, little bits here and there and dissenting uh, opinions in terms of, well, it's kind of like just sort of rehashing the first one to a certain degree. but. Overall, I don't recall a, an outcry or a loud voice of people hating on this movie when it first came out. Yeah, I mean, that's what I've been wondering about. I'm like, I guess I wasn't paying attention when it came out because when I've been hearing this stuff lately, I'm like, this seems new to me. I really felt like most people were pretty happy with it. I was <laughs> like, super mixed on it. Were you? Like, I enjoyed it. That was fun. But overall, I was like, meh. What, what, what about it was meh to you? Just I forget what I said back at the time, but... It was, I mean, like, it was one that was like, yeah, it was, it was a fun little adventure, but overall, like, I didn't connect with the new characters in any way, shape, or form, and... I mean, the funny thing is, too, is I feel like a lot of the negative reaction has been, oh, well, it wasn't, like, it didn't feel like the original Jurassic Park. I'm like, well, I didn't fucking expect it to. I'm like, to yeah, me, it's not going to be the original Jurassic Park. This is going to be new, and it's this whole, like, okay, we actually then eventually open an actual park, and it's it's going to be a whole different experience and different people. And I don't know. I, I guess I wasn't expecting much when I finally did see it. And I was like, Oh, wow. I, I don't know. I enjoyed it. I mean, I, it, do I think it's as good or better than the first film? Oh, hell no. Like, but I don't know. I, I, I liked it. And it's funny. Like I, I think hands down, it's my second favorite Jurassic park film. Like I, oh, well, yeah. I never liked lost world. And yeah, it, The Lost know. World has always been one of those few Spielberg films that I do not like. And and then there's Jurassic Park 3. That's whatever. 
But uh, it, I don't know. I've been hearing a lot of people that are like, oh, you know, it's like their least favorite Jurassic Park movie. And I'm like, really? Like, you think Jurassic Park 3 was better than Jurassic World? Like, uh, okay. I mean, I agree with you, but yeah. I was like, nah. I don't know. Hmm. Anyways. Uh, Bobby, you... To me... I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, to me, the kids were somewhat annoying. Uh, but that that seems to be par for the course when it comes to movies and kids for the most part with right. me and especially with the Jurassic Park series. But um, other than that, it gave me exactly what I was expecting from it and, and wanted from it. So and plus, I actually I to me. I actually like the addition of Chris Pratt. I think that if you take him out of that movie and maybe put a different actor in, I probably um, maybe wouldn't have liked it as much. I would have still probably at least enjoyed it, but I think he elevated the movie for me just because of his natural charisma and and charm and and his personality, I think really helped uh, sell the movie for me though. No, I, I would agree with you on that. Uh, I I enjoyed Chris Pratt in the movie, but uh, yeah. What do you what are you thinking, Bobby, about uh Trevor returning? Are you happy to hear that, or kind of eh, not not wishing? Maybe we is that possibly a bad sign? Like, you know, we had obvious we have a, obviously another director have has made the second film. Is the fact that they've already brought somebody else in to make the third a bad sign for how the second movie is going to be? What do you th- what do you think? No, I, I really don't think it has any bearing, it, it, or at least when I heard the news, I was just like, oh, okay. Because to, I guess when the way I was thinking about it was that Colin Trevorrow, he did the first one, and it obviously was such a huge success. And then I think, I, I don't remember the specifics either. He is executive producing on this one, or he helped uh, shape the script of this second one in some way, something. I know he had something to do with the second I thought one. he had a lot to do with the script, actually. I'll look it up as you keep talking. And, and so I guess in my mind, not thinking that they were trying to do something in terms of what Star Wars was trying to do, where there's a different director set up for each movie, I don't think I ever remember hearing that about the the – Jurassic Park series going in that direction that when they said Trevorrow would be back for the third one I felt like okay that makes sense because he worked on that first one and it was probably such a big kind of thing that it, it's draining so he wouldn't have wanted to come right back for a second one and then he also had the Star Wars stuff going on and then when that didn't work out to me it made sense that okay why not return back to Jurassic Park since you've had your hands in it since it's um been back with these new sequels so it just made sense to me it, it did the news didn't excite me but it just did it made sense to me i guess yeah he uh did uh, co-write the script for jurassic world fallen kingdom him and okay. uh, Derek Connolly. uh both of them also worked on the script for the first film with a couple other people are credited on that first movie but they're the only writers on jurassic world fallen kingdom any thoughts michelle are you uh happy to see trevor back or Sure. Yeah, why not? Okay. I have zero thoughts on that. <laughs> okay. Uh, I've never heard a less interested okay. response from Michelle. Like, yeah, go ahead. Sure, Do what you want. Sure, why not? I don't care. I have zero expectations in this franchise, so. Yeah, you haven't been very excited to see the second film. No. <laughs> not at all. I, I I get that. I mean, I I like Jurassic World, but the, the trailer so far for the second movie, I almost couldn't care less. Like that's what I'm saying. I'm like, eh. And so, the you know, I, with the first one, it was what it was. The second one, I have zero. I'm like, whatever. I mean, I'll still see it, but at the same time, it's like I have, meh, meh, meh. So yeah, sure, okay, yeah, let's we'll bring it back. Let's see what we can salvage. But my expectations are extremely low. Uh, one last bit of news. Uh, this is a comic I've never read before, but I've heard a lot about why The Last Man has finally gotten a pilot order from FX. Uh, I only bring it up because I have heard so much about this comic and how good it is. Uh, it won, uh, uh, I think, like three Eisner Awards back when this was out. Um, also, it won the first Hugo Award for Best Graphic Story. 
Uh, there's there's been a lot of talk for a while of when is this going to get adapted into either a film or a TV show, and it looks like uh, we are at least headed in that direction in terms of TVs because FX has ordered a pilot based on the comic book series. Uh, Bobby, you know much about it? Have you read it before? No, and I think we've talked about it before on the show because at one point in time it was going to be a movie within the last I I, I want to say last three four years that they were thinking of turning it into a film. And it was going to be with uh, Shia LaBeouf, and it just fell through. So I know that this series is hugely popular. I have the the comics. I just have not sat down and read them. But the the idea that them them turning it into a series, I think even at the time when I remember hearing the news about the the movie, a lot of people were excited about the idea of the movie, but thought that it could work even better as a TV series. So I'm looking forward to them having this on FX. And I don't know if you guys have watched FX, anything on FX lately, but um, more and more, every station I watch from USA to FX to Sci-Fi Channel, man, they're letting the words fly. I don't, I don't think there's any much censorship in terms of right. uh, language that you can't really say now on, on cable because – they seem to be just um, okay with pretty much anything, especially uh, depending on the show. Like I'll watch Atlanta on FX, and I don't know that there's not, not any words that I haven't heard them say on that on that show that was censored. That, I mean, that's been censored. So everything seems to be okay to say. And when a show like that, I, or when a, yeah, when a series like Why the Last Man, I don't know that it necessarily lends itself to that, but it, it just means to me that you can do more than you used to be able to do on cable. And so I think that having that type of a show on a, a network like FX will be beneficial. Uh, I mean, at, th- at this point in time, it could have been on AMC. It could have been on one of the other streaming services. And I think as long as the people behind it understand the material and are willing to, I don't know what the budget needs to be on it, but are willing to spend what they need to, then it could be a, a, a very successful thing for FX to have. Right. Uh, for those who aren't familiar with it, I'll read uh, at least a variety's explanation of what this is about. Uh, exploring race, or exploring gender, race, class, and survival, why the last man is a post-apocalyptic science fiction story that takes place in a world in which all men, except for one, are dead. Uh, beginning in 2002, the comic book series uh, by uh, uh, Brian K. Vaughn and Pia Guerrera. It was published by DC Comics and ran for about 60 issues. So, yeah, that's uh, possibly coming to FX at this point. Just a pilot order right now. I think I remember hearing something, too, like because it's 60 issues and you know it has a definitive ending, that if they were to do a TV series... They could do something. I want to say it was like they were saying you could do twelve episodes for five seasons, and then you'd be able to hit like your series of the books, the comics. But I don't know if that number would exactly work out because that I don't know if an episode is a one-to-one correlation of the comics. But um, yeah, I can see something like that because they know that they have a definitive ending where they could just go for like five seasons and be done. All right. Well, with that, uh, it's about time to wrap things up. About time to wrap things up. Um, as always, we'd love to hear back from everyone listening. You can email us at feedback at flickereffect.com. Uh, you can also reach out to us on Twitter at twi- flicker underscore effect. And also, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram as well, and on YouTube. Uh, I'm David Lott. I'm Bobby Jackson. And I'm Michelle Hillard. Thanks for listening.